Hello. Well, uh, today because it's uh, you know now that's October and uh, it's Halloween time, I thought it was fairly appropriate to begin to talk about some horror films this month. Um, and recently, I have just rewatched a film that I think is fairly underrated, or at the very least not mentioned as much compared to some other horror films, um, in particular from this particular director. Um, and that film is The Serpent and the Rainbow, a Wes Craven film. Um, this uh, came out in 1988, uh, um, though the copyright on the back says 1987. It was filmed and made in 87, but it came out early in 88. And this is the Scream Factory uh, version, and it was it's really great. The um, the making of uh, was really good, uh, and uh, I haven't read or I haven't listened to the commentary. I might have to do that uh, with Bill Pullman. And watching this film, you know, um, if you've never seen it, um, I don't want to really spoil it for you, um, but the gist is. This is a film that uh, has to do with voodoo and Haiti and how at the beginning there was there's a man who Christoph who uh, is said to be dead and um, you know he doesn't have a pulse he doesn't they put the stethoscope against his nose and everything and they no breath or anything and so you know he's declared dead. Um, but, uh, you see in the coffin, he has a tear run down, which indicates he's not dead. And years later, he's walking amongst everybody, because, you, know, you know, he didn't die. But there is, like, a zombification that has happened, and Bill Pullman's character, um, is hired to go and find out what happened here because you know can't be voodoo magic or anything of that nature it has to be something like scientific I think it's like some sort of compound or something that you know uh, if found out what they can what it is they can then use this for good you know worldwide and help with like like an anesthetic essentially um, and other things you know it can just help people um, and that's the basic gist of the film. But if you've seen the movie, you know it, it, this is quite a film. This is quite a, a trip, to say the least. Um, this is just a... I remember watching this when I was a teenager, and I was just very... It was, I was just blown away. I was like, wow. <laughs> this, this is quite a ride. Um, and, you know, the cast is... You know, fantastic. Everyone plays their part well, and Bill Pullman. You know, and watching this movie, I'm like, Bill, P what happened to this dude? You know, I remember he was like huge, like in the '80s. Of course, I wasn't born in the '80s, but uh, you know, he's in various films. You know, Spaceballs, and in the '90s, he was really popular. But then, you know, after the '90s, you know, after all these big films. The 2000s come and he's not in as many big films anymore. He pops up here and there, but not as substantial as one would think. And I just, you know, seeing him in a lead role, really, I'm like... And he's really great. He's great in this film. He's pretty much great in basically every film that I've seen him in. I haven't seen every film he's been in, but from what I've seen, he's been... He's good... I haven't seen the Independence Day sequel. Um, I've heard not very good things about that film. I hope his performance, at the very least, was good. Um, it'd be a shame if it, it wasn't all that incredible. But you know, you know that's a different film altogether. But uh, just this, this is such a trip, and it's so. Uh, it kind of gives you a good 
sense of what the voodoo religion is like. Um, and, and it does so fairly res very respectfully. Uh, you know, it doesn't demonize it or anything. You know, it shows aspects of it. I mean, you know, there's obviously, a, I'm sure, more to this, but, you know, watching this movie again, you know, I'm really in awe of Wes Craven's talent as a director, um, because he didn't really want to make this just a strict horror film. I mean, it is a horror film, and with some of the stuff that happens, obviously, it's creepy, disturbing, and everything, but not in the sense of what you think of with Wes Craven, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Hills Have Eyes, uh, Last House on the Left were some, uh, some of the big major films he had done, and of course he would do Scream <clears throat> uh, later. But this film really, um, it's quite different um, from if you've seen any of those films and you've seen, and then you watch this, it is a very different film. Um, but if you've never seen this movie, you know, I don't want to talk about it too much other than the sort of general gist of the film. Uh, this is a, this is just an incredible ride. Uh, Wes Craven is incredibly talented. Everybody in here, Bill Pullman, of course. And who all else is in here? Kathy Tyson, Zix Mulkey, uh, Paul Winfield, uh, based off of the book, or inspired by the book by Wade Davis, which is the, which is inspired by like a true story of the of like zombification down back down there. Um, no, so this isn't technically a true story, but it's loosely inspired by. A book that sort of covers events that did happen revolving what like seemed to be zombification. Um, and if you don't know about the Screen Factory, what's cool about them is you know here's a cover, and it does have this cover, but it also you can take out uh, the Blu-ray and uh, can have a reversed cover here. You know if you take this out and you put it back in. Of course, back is always the same, though. The barcode thing, you know, that's missing if you put that in like this. Um, um, I have some of the Screen Factory stuff, though. Unfortunately, um, if you wait a bit too long, you'll never be able to get like the slip covers again. You don't make them, it seems like. I want to get Black Christmas, their release, because it has like all the special features from the previous DVD sets into one. Um, I mean, I guess I could always get it and then re uh, take it out and, um, you know, take the sleeve out and reverse it, um, you know. Show you. Yeah. See, that's the uh, slipcover case. But I thought, you know, hey... Why not? This I have a slip cover for this one, so mine as well. You know, I have the original poster. This was the poster, and uh, you know, Bill Pullman in the coffin, like, you know, don't bury me. I'm not dead. Uh, which uh, seems to be the very the sentiment I'm sure many people in that sort of situation would say. Or if they um, can't say anything, you know, they, they're they definitely thinking it. And um, and this is a film that is just very good. Um, if you've never seen it, I definitely recommend it. Um, uh, Wes Craven truly shows just how talented he is. And, and just within the horror genre, he's not just bound to slasher films. <clears throat> Though I guess to a degree, The Last House on the Left isn't uh, completely uh, a slasher film. Um, there are elements to it, obviously, and there are, you know, suspenseful moments. And, but I guess not in the traditional sense, not like Nightmare on Elm Street, for instance. Um, and I, yeah, I just really, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what all else I could say without, uh, uh, you know, 
saying too much. Oh, and Michael Goff is in this. You know, Alf, uh, Alfred in the Burton and Schumacher films. Um, he's a very good actor. He plays his part very well. Um, yeah. This film is 98 minutes. Um, not a very long film. Um, but, you know, it seems very appropriate. Apparently the first cut of this film was three hours. Over three hours long, so we like cut it in half. And uh, it's very good, but he, like, I guess Wes Craven thought it was too talky at that length. And apparently this is the first film he submitted to the MPAA that came back with an R rating. You know, it didn't come back with an NC-17 rating, because I guess it's not so violent and bloody and gory and all that. Uh, to a degree, I think it is, uh, you know, it's a supernatural horror film. So there's not a whole lot of blood and gore and all that stuff. Um, but it's a very effective horror film. It's a very good horror film. I think it is underrated to a good degree. Um, uh, but it definitely seems to be getting more and more popular as the years go on. It's not Nightmare on Elm Street, but it's still really good, uh, regardless. Um, and I say it's underrated because you don't, you don't hear about it mentioned as much, uh, uh, particularly within the conversation of Wes Craven. Um, some of those films that I mentioned earlier often get talked about more. Um, but this film is quite a trip. It's a fantastic film. It's like an experience as you watch it. And um, I find myself getting immersed whenever I watch it. It's really good. Um, so if you've never seen it, uh, I recommend it. And if you have, what do you think? Do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Do you love it? Hate it? If you've seen it, you can definitely say what your thoughts are of the film. If not... You know, hey, check it out. Uh, anyway, I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you're all having a good day. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. I will see you all next time. Bye.